this technique, we're going to do a transfer uh, technique using clear packing tape. And basically what we're going to do is create a design on our jelly plate and then pull it up onto our packing tape where we can use it on a scrapbook page, on a card, put it on a piece of aluminum, whatever, um, to transfer our design. So the first stage is we need to grab a couple of colors and put them on our plate. But before we do that, we're going to take a couple of pieces of torn paper and just lay them here. This is just going to act like a mask. So where this paper is, the color will not transfer to the jelly mat. And I'm going to add, let's see, let's try a little red. And I'm going to try a little of this violet. And I'm putting the two colors on at once. So you see, it sort of makes a gradient as I go across it. I got quite a bit of paint on there, so I'm going to take some of the paint off on my scratch piece of paper. And I'm just going to give it another little thin. Okay. Now I'm going to play. I'm going to leave those strips of paper on there for a minute, and I'm going to take a stamp. Again, this one is little spirals coming out of it, and I'm just going to randomly stamp it into the paint. Okay. So now I'm going to do them. I'm just going to take these little pieces of paper off. Well, actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do something called a, subtract, a subtraction. And to do that it just means taking some of the paint off the jelly plate paint plate. And I'm going to use a very high-tech device for this. It's the rubber end of a pencil. And I'm just going to randomly put little dots all over the exposed areas. And you see that's just subtracting some of the paint. So that's a subtraction method. Next, I'm going to pull these little pieces of paper off. Now I could save these, use them maybe in my art journal or something like that. But I'm not. I'm just going to throw them away at this point because they're in my way. So I've got some more areas to play with. So I'm going to pause the video here for a second while I find some interesting things to add some paint with. Okay, so now I'm going to add some design to it and add some paint to it. So I have here a piece of uh, actually palette paper, um, which is a type of paper that you can put some water on this and it'll keep your paint from drying out. And all you need to do is just spritz it with a little water and then add some paint. I'm going to add a little yellow. That might be more than a little. And I'm just going to use my brayer to just smooth it out a bit. Ooh, look, I got some color off of this from my other thing, so that's okay. I'm just, I'm going to use, work with that. It's kind of pretty. And I'm taking a texture stamp. This one has little lines through it. And you can see there's some silver on it from another time I used it. I don't know if that's going to come off or not, but I'm not going to worry about it. Again, didn't clean it. And I'm just going to dip it into the paint. I might need to put more paint on it. And I'm just going to stamp. And you know, I think I'm going to add a little bit more paint. Maybe this time I'll use my palette knife instead just to smooth it out as opposed to the briar. Briar. I can have a hard time with that word. I'm sorry. And we'll dip that in. Pick up some paint. Try it there. And maybe one more time over here. Okay. Clean that off because it is paint. And you know what happens. Paint dries. And then we have a problem with our stamp. So give that a fairly good clean. Okay. And I'm going to go back to another rubber stamp. And I think I'm going to add, let's add some of this light blue. Let's 
mess it up. Got a little yellow in there with it too, but that's okay. Okay. Ooh. Careful with this stamp. This definition isn't quite as fine as the other one. Okay. I'm gonna clean that off with my baby wipe. And I'll be back in a second with a couple of more things. This time I've put a little red on my palette paper and I'm just going to smooth it around a little bit. And I'm going to take a little cup, a little shot glass thing, and just roll the rim in the red paint. Put enough on here, pick up, and... Okay, so that's good with that. Um, now, I'm just going to, um, let's see, what should I do? Should I add anything more to this or not? Let me think about this for a second. Um, well, maybe I'll go in with the red again and use my handy dandy little eraser. And just add, before we use the subtract, because we were putting it in paint. Now I'm putting it in the more open areas. It's kind of fun. Because you never know what you're going to get. I think I'm giving this thing some measles here. Just trying to break up some of the areas that are more solid colors. Like over here, for example. More. Maybe we're here in the blue. And then the blue. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry. And this can probably take about five minutes or so to dry. So we will return. Okay. Now that your jelly plate is thoroughly dry and you want to make sure it's absolutely dry, because for this technique, when you start laying down the packing tape, if your paint isn't dry or if it's raised up and it's still a little soft, it might smear a little bit on your tape. That might not be the worst disaster, but you'll want to see. Now, I've done some pre-cutting of some strips of packing tape. So you just lay them over. And you take a credit card or straight edge of some sort and just smooth the tape over. We'll take another piece and you know something trying to line this up isn't always the easiest so I want to get the maximum amount here and you want to get the air bubbles out so basically you're varnishing it Piece of tape. I pre cut my tape just for the sake of this video. And I've cut the tape a little longer than the actual jelly plate itself. And I think I can get maybe one more piece on the end there. It's going to be a skinny piece. it well because this is going to lift the paint off the jelly plate 
Now, I'm going to get myself a piece of wax paper. And I'm just going to lay it down here over to the side. And this is what I'm going to put my tape on when I peel it off. So, now you peel slowly. And if it looks like it's not picking up something, just let it go back down and rub it again. Varnish it a little bit more. There we go, there's my first piece. I'm just going to lay that on the wax paper and take my next piece. Oh, there's now, there's what I talked about. One piece that, little piece that, that probably wasn't that dry. I should have left it a little longer. The longer you leave it, the better. Okay, there's a second piece. Let's take a look. And we'll pull off this next piece. Now you noticed I kind of got those two pieces overlapping and that's why I'm having a little difficulty with that one. And this is the little skinny piece, the last one. Let's take that off. Oops. Now here's a lesson. I've got a wrinkle in this and I don't know if I can get the wrinkle out. I don't think I can. I'm just going to put it down here. Maybe I can cut, cut it out later. So I have them all down on my wax paper. And now they're ready for, I can peel them off the wax paper whenever I want to use them, trim them, and I can put them across a piece of foil background. I can use them in a art journal. I can use them as background strips or overlays on a scrapbook paper or on a card but each one has a little neat different design to it and it's ready to go. So there you go. Jelly plate transfer onto packing tape. Oh, and by the way, first time I've ever done this, I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs>